this is going to be my review of the Pioneer AVHP 8400BH. This model here is the Pioneer's top of the line, a flagship piece of all their double DINs excluding GPS. So if you're looking for the model with the GPS, uh, you might want to check out my review on the AVIC Z140BH because that's the one that has the HDD, the hard drive Navi built in. But if Navi isn't a big deal for you, um, then this is for you. So like I mentioned, this is a seven inch screen. This model, which I'm gonna power up right now, let this thing go through its little demo mode. You can get a little idea of what this unit has to offer for you. That bleep was my iPod. That's what this thing is up here, if you were wondering. My iPod is plugged into the unit. And it goes through its little light show. It tells you about how beautiful it is. And how this mix tracks thing works, which ain't really nothing but automatically playing back your playlist. playlist. This unit does have the Pandora compatibility because, you know, it works with the iPhone. So that's not no big shock, but still nonetheless a good feature. This model here does have an LED backlit display, which I think is pretty cool. You can see it's very bright, very vivid, not pixelated. Looks nice. Now, the Bluetooth that's built into this unit, you can use for Bluetooth streaming from your device, whether it be an Android or an iPhone. So that's cool. Some other stuff that I think is super cool about this unit is the 8-band graphic EQ. Um, however, what I don't like about it is if you wanted to have the mic where you can tune all your speakers front, rear, left, right to create your sound stage, that little feature is built into the back of this unit. And I'll show you where. Now, back in there, there's an SD card slot right there, which is cool, and that's where the auto EQ mic goes. However, not included. That is where your CD or DVDs are going to go, right back there. You can tilt that face, so if you need to uh, have it mounted lower up in your dash, which I don't foresee from many people, you can actually adjust that. And on top of that, what's really cool about this unit is it actually works for it and against it. In one way, I think it's it's awesome because I, I personally own a JVC um, you know, GPS unit, kind of like this, uh, which has a detached face. However, my detachable face comes off and on very easily, almost like butter, too easy. This unit, not so much. I actually had to struggle with this thing, almost fight it to uh, get it to do what I wanted to do and how to click in there. I didn't like it, kind of made like a crunchy sound. Uh, so I wasn't a, very excited about that at all. But I'll tell you, there is a lot of good things that I am excited about it because this, you know, if you're just looking for a review if someone's going to just brag and tell you about everything that's wonderful about it, you know, that's probably not me because I tell you like it really is. I tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's see what this thing's got. Like I said, it's got that 8-band EQ, which I think is great. It's got that auto EQ, not so great because you got to get that MC20 microphone, which is sold separately. This unit will play SDs like I showed you when I spooled the face down. It also takes the SDHC cards, which are very good because most of these cameras, like the one I'm shooting this uh, video with, with the Nikon D3100, that supports you know the high definition stuff. You can put that media on an SD card, and this unit will actually play it back and play it back well. You can use. Um, a rear view camera with this, you can change the polarity from negative to positive, so depending on your circuit for your reverse signal, you can ad adapt to that. That's cool. It's got a wired remote input, so if you're going to connect a steering wheel control, you can do that. The detached face, which I told you about. Uh, it's a 7 inch wide, LED backlit, like I was telling you about. Um, you can change the backgrounds, the videos and stuff like that. I'll, I'll touch on that and actually goof around with the buttons and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, what else we got here? The Anyglare coated screen, you know, nothing f too special there. They all have that crap. Um, disc capacity is one, it's a single disc. Plays DVD, CD, uh, MP3, Windows Media, iTunes, AAC, all that junk. Uh, JPEG files that will play back in a CD disc format, DVD, or USB. Uh, another good thing about this unit is it has not one, but two USB ports in the back, which when I flip it around, that's cool. I, I haven't seen anything that has two. Well, that's pretty that's pretty good. Good job on that one. It has a DivX playback. 
that's a nice thing as well. Uh, it has a Dolby Digital Decoder, DTS Digital Output. Okay, so it has an output, which means you have to have something to process it on the other side of the output. Um, it's got their regular Super Tuner 3D, whatever the hell that is. HD Radio Tuner is built into it. 24 preset stations. Um, it's got the RDS feature built into it, which is nice. Um, that Mix Tracks, um, I think I'm saying that right, Mix Tracks, Mix Tracks, yeah. I basically, I haven't really goofed around with that too much, but from what I understand of it, it's just a way, for, it's kind of like being your own little DJ in your car, I suppose, so you could put all your, your files together and make a little, you know, playlist thing or something. Um, the crossover network built in is high pass, low pass, so you can do your, your four channel amp outputs and your low pass filter like any other pioneer that yeah, you would expect to find in this price range is going to have a low pass filter for your subsonic frequency stuff um, it has an advanced sound retriever uh, the bluetooth is built in like I said it will stream audio video uh, you know phone conversations the whole bit uh, it does have a link search feature for iPod Pandora compatible I think I said that already uh, you get the two USB ports and auxiliary input audio video in the back of the unit, which are just standard composite RCAs. You know, nothing too crazy. An IP bus, so that way you can plug in your Sirius or your XM radio. If you're going to do the XM, you're going to want to get the GEXP 920XM. If you're going to get the Sirius, you're going to need two pieces. The CDSB10, which is the Pioneer Sirius hub, and the SCC1, which is the Universal Satellite Radio Tuner. And that pretty much covers all those features. It's got an RGB input, also you can add the AVIC U220 uh, GPS if you wanted to plug that into there directly or of course you can use the app on the iPod um, if you have that on yours. It has a dual zone audio video which is very good so you can do simultaneous zones uh, one for the front passengers and a second for the rear which is very cool. Uh, the color custom customization you got five colors and 112, which you can customize, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, you got the photo viewer. I think I talked about that. Um, you know, it's got minimal buttons on there on the front, but they're all good, and, and I think in pretty, pretty good, you know, layout. You got your source button right there in the bottom left. That'll take you to your radio. Nice and big too. iPod, boom, you know. Like, let's just see if you want to do an iPod. You could This is how you search. Your criteria is laid out. Songs, artists, albums, songs, podcasts, genres, video. I don't have because, I believe it or not, I still can't figure out how the hell to do that. I used to know how to do it. Um, audio books, that's all right there. X will take you out of any screen in this unit, which is very good. But let's just say I wanted to find a uh, song by Pink Floyd, right? I'll hit Artist. See, it doesn't have the, the alphabet on here for some reason. I don't think... Oh, actually, here it is. A. So, P. Hmm. Either it's miscategorizing my iPod or this radio is screwed up. Alright, let's try something else. Um, let's see, I want to find Q, Q for Queensryche, because I know I just put some, oh, there you go, Queensryche, there's your songs, it's nice, it breaks down all the subfolders, pretty good, and it's got four lines of text, you got the, the song, the artist, the album, and the genre. That's pretty good. That's good. Good feature. Very nice. All this stuff is very hands-on. Lots of buttons, lots of things to play with. There's your EQ. Just drag them where you want them to go at. Pretty cool. You got all your presets down there as usual. You got two customizable settings, one for user one and one for user two. I'll just go over to the main menu real quick to show you some stuff. These are all the icons that are on there, your Pandora XM. 
rear view cam if you want to override and have the camera Excuse on. Excuse me for that little hiccup there in the video. It seems like my camera just decided to cut off. Okay. So getting back to this, this Pioneer unit, I wanted to just point out some of the highlights and some of the not so highlight features of this unit. Um, so let's start off with the good. Uh, the good is that it has a 50 by 4 pre peak you know, or output for the speakers, which, you know, I don't buy. I think it's realistically more like 15 by 4 but I think anybody who's going to own one of these units is going to be intelligent enough to go out and invest themselves into a, an amplifier to get some real good pure sound out of this bad boy because it's certainly, you know, capable of doing it with the 4-volt preamp outputs that this thing does supply to you. I can only hope that those 4-volt four, four preamp outputs that they invested into putting into this model also have such good isolators to avoid the problem with the line instability or the, the lack of line balancing outputs that some of the other Pioneer pro problems have been over the year. They've, some of their units, uh, usually the cheaper models, have been plagued by ground loop problems and you know they, they generally be like little noise generators and you'd really have to fudge a lot with them to try to get that noise out of your system. But I don't have any experience so if anybody does have any experience by all means you know throw a little comment in there let the rest of the world know about it so that way people know because that's what these reviews are all about you know honest you know truthful you know s s experiences with these units because it's you know if you go out running out and spend 600 bucks on a piece like this and it's turns out to be just that a piece you know that's not good you don't want that but so far you know we're going to be optimistic um like i said this is one of their higher end units uh it does have an eight band graphic eq which is very easily customizable which i'll show you really fast actually you know what let me just finish my settings and I'll go into that um, this unit does have an SD or an SDHC card reader um, you know emphasizing the HC by the way there's two eject buttons why I have no idea because they both do the same damn thing but right now I'm going to eject that face back in here there's an optional input for a mic so if you wanted to auto tune your, your uh, radio you have to run out and buy that which I frown on if you wanted the EQ, auto EQ feature they call it you'd have to purchase the CD-MC20 that's a required accessory if you want it to be an audiophile you'd have to go out and spend the money for that that kinda sucks But your SD card is back there. That's a good feature. It reaches the HC. That's a good thing, especially for guys who have nice cameras or put media or you know or HD videos stuff like that. Good feature. You got a wired remote input, so you, so you can interface with your steering wheel controls. It does have a a wireless remote, which is included. I'll show you that. Pretty much the same one that comes with all their other uh, video receivers, as far as I can tell. You know, it does all the stuff that you're going to need. It has a front and rear selector switch on the side for your front and rear zones. Your volume, your, your mute button, your menu so you can access the same things this button here would do. You know, you could toggle right here using this little rotary commander kind of deal. And down here, you know, audio controls, change of track, all that kind of crap. It's all laid out right there. Also, they have a CDVM1, which is the wired microphone for your Bluetooth and and streaming purposes you would use this and it also comes with a visor mount like I said pretty typical CDVM1 nothing special there um, this unit does have an LED backlit display it's not an LCD anymore it's all about LED now any glare coated screen no big deal touch panel screen we know that motorized and it also has a step feature so you can go like this and you could step it out or you can just go all the way right there I hit the wrong button touch it once why can't I do this right they need to make a button for idiots oh there we go now we're stepping it up and close the rope as much as you need to go. So if your unit is, you know, mounted lower in your dash panel, I could see that being a pretty good feature for you. It does have a disc capacity of, of a single CD or DVD, whatever. 
Um, it will play MP3, Windows Media's files, iTunes, of course, AAC pay playback. It has the RGB input, which you can utilize to plug in an AVIC U220 um, additional add-on GPS system if you wanted to add GPS into the unit. It does have a very cool feature, dual zone audio video, which means that you could have zone one in the front doing, say, Sirius in the rear doing um, HD tuner or reversed or something like that. You could use the disc or any source really you have connected to your unit. You can flip back and forth, which is, I think, a very good thing. So good job on that one. It does have a photo viewer. Again, you would get that either through the discs, uh, but I don't foresee many people running around with discs to their family and putting them into their radio. Uh, most of that media I would suspe suspect would come from your USB device like your iPod or your Android or your SD card. You can do color customization. There's five background display colors which I'll show you in a second how those, how those look. Um, you got the display off mode so if you don't want to see it at night you could do that so it's not bothering you or your passengers. It's got a wired remote input for the external steering wheel controls, remote control I covered, detachable face. Now the detachable face uh, I have a lot of issues with um, in my time playing with this radio. Um, the first time I did it I was scared to death I was going to crack the thing in half uh, because when you do the eject feature I had a very difficult time and I'm not like manhandling this unit. Don't think that I'm being roughhousing with this thing. But to click it back on, it did make this terrible crunching sound, and I really don't know if it's just because I don't know what I was doing, but I, you would think that I would have more experience. My JVC uh, comes off. There's a nice little button. It looks like a regular car stereo. You pull it off from the right. You do it in reverse to put it back on. This one here, not so much. And I'm going to attempt to do it and attempt not to break it. So here, that button means take the face off right down here there's a little button you slide it over to the side and you lift it off okay that wasn't too terrible there's a lot of stuff in there to click on to like you can see that these three are designed to hold it in place those are your configuration your, your plugs and then this here is the clip that holds it all together you know but the face in my opinion when you power your car off, which I'm going to do, well I can't because I have it hardwired to a power supply. So I don't know, I, I can't really maybe give you an answer on that one right now. But I'm going to attempt to put this back on. Alright. Better than the first time. You know what, I'm thinking it was probably my fault because when I tried to detach the face I did it in the fixed or flat position. And I think that that's why I got that noise. Just for the heck of it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to just go, just be crazy. Because if I leave my car, that's probably the position I'd want it in. Not that I'd probably be even able to do this. The, the radio was mounted in my car now that I think about it. But. Now, listen. I did make that crunch sound at time. Alright, you know what? I'll let him slide on the on the crunch thing. There's nothing wrong with the detached face. It's fine. It's just me. Now as far as the rest of the stuff goes, I'm gonna show you those themes. Okay, so start with the background, that's what you're gonna see in the splash screen. They have this swirly whirly looking thing, which is kinda gay. Then they have this which is like a, a wall. The brushed aluminum look, the pixie sticks, and they got this uh, movie thing, if that's what you want to call it. It's like the Diva Dust. Not really uh, exciting. Your illumination colors, you're going to notice you get the five choices, like I was explaining to you a little bit earlier. Let me just move in a little bit. Okay, so right now we're set to blue. That's what your gray is going to look like. Green. Yellow or amberish. Red. No big deal, right? You can see it changed the entire screen, how it, how it looks. Let me try to focus in on that really good. Okay, 
Okay, so in the back here, you got your regular old 16-pin power speaker harness. Back here, you have not one, but you have two USB slots, which is really good. They even give you a plug for the one you're not using. Over here, you have your audio and video inputs. IP bus input, so if you're going to add the uh, CDSB10 and SCC1 for your Sirius radio, that's where it's going to go. Or if you do an XM, you'll get the GEXP 920 XM. That's your steering wheel interf interface plug. That's where your CDVM1 microphone goes. This is where the AVIC U220, if you're going to add the GPS, you plug it right in there. Over here, you have those 4-volt preamp outputs for your front, your rear, and your sub. Your antenna input your rear audio output and you know you got your digital output which you know that's another option that's probably going to be another video but uh solid performer man you got a lot of stuff back here mikey likes it over on the side they give you a lot of choices so when you're going to isomat this into your into your uh application it's pretty good they give you three sets because that's usually a a challenge sometimes in some vehicles they don't give you they just give you this one or that one and not the one in between so that's good I think they did a good job there. It's got a nice sleek side. Front of the screen, super clean. Minimal buttons. Everything you need is in the touch screen. Very user friendly. So over, you know, all in all, I give you a, a nine. So you know that's 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 pretty good because you know I'm a picky guy, man. You know, and I I think that this piece here, yeah. Do I like it as much as the JVC? No, I do not. But I like it better than anything else I've seen so far this year. So if you're looking for a good receiver, check it out. This is the Pioneer. It's the AVHP 8400BH.